So I'm going to cover blanching and steaming as the last part of the moist cooking methods. Blanching is probably one of the moist cooking methods that I utilize the most. So what blanching actually is, is to drop a food item into a hard rolling boil of water, a pot that's already been brought to a boil and is prepared and ready. That water is generally heavily salted. Um, it should taste like the Atlantic Ocean. That's what chef taught me. And that's important, not just for flavoring and seasoning the food, but the salt stabilizes the green chlorophyll and color in the green vegetables. So you drop the food item into the rolling boil, put a lid on, bring it back to a boil and cook it for a very short period of time. The time is going to depend on what the hardness of the food item that you are doing is. So for a tender item like sugar snap peas, asparagus or snow peas, it's about a minute, maybe two at the max. For harder things, that I do like broccoli or um, a uh, green bean, um, then it's going to be a little bit, a few minutes, but it's still a short period of time depending on what you're doing. So uh, little French green beans are really good cooked this way. They're different than the green beans that you find in the can or that you would snap and cook down country style. So the cooking process is going to really make all of that chlorophyll turn really bright green and get your food softened just to a crisp tender. So I'll pull something out of the pot and I'll try it with my mouth and, and taste it. And when it's perfect, like it still has bite, it still has some crunch, then I wanna stop that cooking process. So I take it out of the hot water, put it into an ice bath that I already have prepared. So I already have a bowl or a pot of ice water and that's gonna stop that cooking process. That's going to keep that vegetable very, very bright green. From that point forward, um, sometimes I might eat the vegetable cold. Sometimes I might mix it in with my salads. Sometimes I might actually cook it again and reheat it uh, in some other way. I do asparagus and the little bitty green beans like this really often. Um, and I might do the bacon wrapped asparagus in the oven. I might put garlic butter on it and broil it really fast. I might grill it uh, with some garlic butter on it. Or if I have cooked off a steak or some pork chops, I might even throw my, my cold blanched asparagus back into that pan right when everything's ready to hit the plate and just kind of flash it around until it's warm. And then it gets that garlic butter goodness out of the pan. And then it has nice seasoning and has flavor and it's reheated. So I'm not necessarily eating the, the cold vegetables, depending on what I'm making. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. But blanching in general, it's a short cooking process in hot water. The water should be pretty salty. And then you shock it with the ice bath. And the ice bath stops that cooking process. It keeps the vegetable nice and crunchy, and it really holds that color, which is really important. If you do like bacon wrapped asparagus, or if you grill asparagus, and you do it from raw, you're only doing the dry cooking, and you're missing that moist opportunity for tenderization. So in the same way, in a previous lesson that we saw a lady parboil her little potatoes and then smash them and then roast them, if you roasted them the whole time, it would be a little different. Um, you would have a cr much crunchier, maybe even hard exterior by the time the interior got soft. So asparagus is like that too. So I do have a video um, on how to blanch asparagus and it really covers what I just kind of like went through. Um, if you want access to that, it's in the instructional presentation. You, you can get to that out of your um, learning module. Um, when it comes to review question, so what does the pot need to look like before I drop my food items in? So the pot should be rolling boiling and I should have added a, a good amount of salt, not super salty, but it should, if I were to taste the water, it should taste pretty salty. Again, not just for flavor, also to stabilize that vegetable. So we've talked a lot in mise en place. Why is it important to cut my vegetables evenly? Everything needs to be cut evenly so that it cooks appropriately. You don't have a big chunk that's still hard and a little thin piece that's all cooked and burnt and soggy. You also want to make sure that you are cooking things for the appropriate time. Like in the stir fry, not everything gets added at the same time. 
go with the hardest, longest cooking thing and work your way down so everything is cooked appropriately at the right time. That's very important in your timing. So in the blanching video, she knows that it's done um, either by using a fork to pierce or you take it out and you take a bite out of it. So this, uh, this slide here, if you're looking at the presentation, really just covers what I covered at the beginning of this video. Uh, and then we move on to steaming. So in steaming, steaming is um, cooking the food above the water in the water vapor. The food should not be cooking in the food then you would be boiling. So that's a different cooking method. So when it comes to steaming vegetables, steaming will cook vegetables. It retains a lot of the nutrients. Um, you get a nice bright flavor. Um, I will say in this particular video, I'm gonna sh uh, I'll show it to you really quickly. It, she does a good job, but at the end, she just puts some pepper on the steamed vegetables. And uh, if you know me, you know I like I like fat things. I like fattening things. So I do add some butter at the end. I like to put garlic butter on um, pretty much everything uh, except for cookies, maybe. And I do recommend that. So steaming vegetables is a great cooking method. And you, you can control the amount of fat that you get when you do things like blanching and steaming. Um, and boiling. So moist cooking allows you to control your fat intake, uh, which is definitely going to make that better and healthier. How to steam vegetables. Learn how to perfectly steam any vegetable in just a few easy steps. Cut your vegetables into uniform sizes so that they cook at roughly the same rate and are all done at the same time. Add the longer cooking veggies first and then the quicker cooking veggies after a few minutes. Add one inch of water to the pot and insert the steamer basket. The surface of the water should be just under the basket. Don't have a steamer basket? Simply ball up some aluminum foil and place them in the pan. Bring the water to a boil over high heat. Distribute the vegetables over the steamer basket evenly. Cover the pot and reduce the heat to medium. Start checking the vegetables after a few minutes. The vegetables are done when you can easily pierce the thickest part of the vegetable with a paring knife. Take the vegetables out of the steamer basket when they still have just a bit of crunch in the middle. Use our guide for rough cooking times for various vegetables. So you can see in that video, steaming, it's very easy. Um, you can have, sometimes people have a pot, sometimes people have one of those little steamer baskets here. So before you add the food, uh, you want to have a little bit of water and then you put your basket or you put something that's going to hold the food out of the water. If the food is in the water, you are boiling. The vegetables are done cooking when you can pierce them uh, lightly with a knife or a fork. So potatoes are going to take the longest amount of time. Asparagus is going to take the quickest amount of time and then broccoli is somewhere in between. So broccoli is going to be four or five minutes or so. Asparagus is just a few minutes and potatoes might take up to 10.